This is the second episode of Roots of Creation. Welcome. I'm Andy Rouse. I'm joined by Yake Hogstrom and Dan Anaki Dan and our first guest, Michelle Merle. How are you doing, Michelle? Uh, like I said, I hope I am okay. So, uh, <laughs> we can uh, try to start uh, to, for a larger public, make understandable the concept of Box Saga. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to take part in it. I'm impressed that uh, we are, after many years, slowly, slowly starting to go to this kind of thing where you have the possibility to go a bit deeper into subjects or maybe not too deep straight from the beginning, but over time, you know, like we have to start with the foundation and the foundation of this story is the language. And uh, that is the thing which I think is interesting to talk about, but also all the side effects that come out of language because basically out of language come all the dictionaries that we have on the planet. Yeah, so yeah. When, when, they talk, when they talk about the magic books where everything is ordered <laughs> nicely, R, uh, and then comes mm -hmm. double R, uh, and then comes double R, uh, B, if that happens to be the case in your language. If not in yours, it's maybe in Malay or Polynesian or Icelandic. And then you go from A, uh, A, uh, B, A, uh, A, uh, B, A, uh, and you know, like the the magic book has been making like an organized structure where we can see that words when they are alphabetically put under each other uh, all these words seem to have to do with the words that are following mm -hmm. or the words that are preceding that word because they consist of similar sound yes and Boxaga is the story of sound and the fact that in the Bok family they have been keeping the meaning of sound. So their language, which is called root, which is exactly the same like the English word root, yeah, the root of the tree or the root of language, this language is called root in root language <laughs> as it is in English language because the English language and the root language are very close so the root language has an alphabet that consists of 29 sounds where these 29 sounds have a meaning and it's the only story that I know where each individual sound have a meaning where within the meaning which also consists of sound yeah so if i give an example like they have the sound ah which in english is a but in root it's ah and ah means aser so aser consists of a s a r so all of this sound create like the quality of the sound ah so you have to start to think in sound instead of in written letter because we already see like the difference between the root and the English where we say A ah, in English you say A where we say A you say E and where we say E you say I <laughs> and that creates for massive confusion in the beginning, but it's coming very clear by itself because you in English, you can think your sound, how you write them. So when you say A, you are making exactly the same mark of the sound as we do in root. It's just that you pronounce it different. The same is with E. For us, it's A, but we write it E like you your or your e and the i for us is e what for you is i but i for us is in english this thing what i look with so for you this is i which will make like a, how would you call that an association to your eye you know? mm -hmm. 
where by us it's a clear sound because I is not a clear sound. I for us is A and E. Right. I is A and E for us. Where for you I it's the association to A, yeah. And <laughs> we say that when we hurt ourselves. <laughs> Sorry? I I <laughs> we say that when we hurt ourselves, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Then also, yeah, you can say I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. So and there is like a funny a few funny thing, but this is interesting when we go through the alphabet in root and, and in English, you know, that you can see yeah. that there is like a difference in the structure of how they name the sounds. So in the root language we have ten clear sounds like a e e u u u o a u u so they are all sound you can oh. do endlessly yeah as much breath you have in this, your this uh, hidden uh, air is very easy to forget yeah, but this is like it come quite late in our story also because mm. he, or, uh, he didn't want to create uh, too much confusion because his story is already quite confusing in the beginning. But everything becomes self-evident because this uh, uh, is exists in the root language in sound, but not in written form. No. They are using the ring with the two dots on top which you call e, uh, yeah? And uh, this e uh, is a ring with an uh, axis through it, which is and only used, I think, in Norwegian and Danish. Mm. Uh, so in the other, in the neighboring countries, uh, areas, they use the mark of this sound. But in Finland, the root language has never been written, it has been a spoken language. Of course, they could write, but that segment will take later on. But because the root language is, the Swedish language is the most close to the root language. And now, since 2050, when Finland became a part of Sweden, in the bureaucratic system, the Swedish language written, written form was introduced in Finland as the written language. So these root people, after 1050, they have been using the Swedish writing system to write their own language, but because that did not consist of this ring with this axis uh, in it, uh, the uh sound, uh, they just use like the Swedish, the ring with the do, two dots on top. But maybe I'm talking here too complicated stuff. <laughs> no, 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 no. We no? follow. We follow. <laughs> we sit like in the classroom here now. So. You, tell <laughs> me when, you tell me when you can't follow because it's, I can understand that for a listener it sounds like abracadabra. No, no, no. No, I think you're doing a good job of uh, explaining it well. I yeah. Try, I try, I try, I try. It's better to take the long route, I think, anyway. So. That's the what we have route. to do on this podcast anyway. I mean, we want people to understand more than anything else because I think yeah. there's a lot of misconception out there and there's been growing confusion, which <laughs> is it, you know, it, but it's because it's becoming more popular. I think, you know, I think people, more people are getting turned on to it. So hey, yes. yeah, it has been taking its time, you know, so yeah. uh, my that's use. the problem with the box saga. I can see a little bit. Uh, it's so huge uh, things, concepts that you really need to think about. And it's so easy to get a little bit uh, wrong when they you know, the hybrids almost take over when it start to fall, the pieces fall together, you get excited and you sort of stop listening almost uh, and start to use two things, you know. <laughs> Go off oh, on yeah, your own tangents. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course. I mean, so, I had the same problem, you know, in the beginning when my friend tells me that, hey, uh, it was uh, 24 February 1984 and uh, in the morning uh, when we come back from some party somewhere on the beach in Goa, full moon party, uh, dancing all night, you know, and then you are totally flabbergasted early in the morning walking 
be at the beach back to your house and we lie on the veranda and uh, one is making a cup of tea and the other one is trying to make some sandwich and uh, for all of us and then we are sitting there and he says that uh, today uh, I have to tell you one story about one alphabet <laughs> that they have been keeping in my family and we already knew from him that he never been to school you know so uh, he had not been to school. He'd been visiting there, but it was not a great success because <laughs> he should he should be educated at home by his mother and his mother's sister uh, on Boxaga and not go to school so that you get totally confused in your brain like that first section of the story, what I just told, where you are then confronted with this confusion because in the school they say, well, you have to do like this. And from your mother, you listen, no, no, it's like this, you know. <laughs> so school was out for him. Yeah, it was not really his program. He has been spending there a couple of days in order to fulfill some kind of bureaucratic uh, a requisite or something, I don't know how to call it, <laughs> but uh, basically uh, he has been educated at home from when he was seven years old by his mother and his mother's sister. And uh, they had to sit and he had to sit and shut up for 20 years, two hours every day. So it's a story that you can explain its basic principle by one kid from seven year old listening to 27 and then when you are in that age you have been figuring out how this sound system is working and you can apply it and you can do your private research but now we want to speed up that process because uh, me and the friends that you will meet on your show that are coming up uh, we have been a little bit in the same situation like him that we have to sit and listen and shut up. <laughs> 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 you just have to listen because in the time things become clear. Now, of course, we are educated at school, in school. So, of course, the opposition was hitting him after five minutes. Yeah, because after five minutes, the attention span of the kids is gone. And they say, but I have been hearing like this, or I have been understanding like this, and I know from this book, blah, 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 blah. And there we start to spew our knowledge of our life experience when we start to listen to Boxaga. Now, I was 28 years old when he started with this program. I become 29 in 1984. And uh, he tell me straight from the beginning, it's a 20-year story. I say, I already been spending uh, nine, ten years with you, so uh, we have uh, not had one fight yet, uh, never throwing the door to each other, so I have nothing special to do. Um, so, uh, you know, I can listen to your story, no problem. Now, if you go to the university and you say to these kids there that now they have to listen for the next 20 years, I'm sure there is not one who will follow that curriculum <laughs> yeah because uh, time is up and i have to pay the mortgage of my house you know? yeah so i have no, to get my job <laughs> yeah so this is normal and this story is absolutely 180 degree the opposite of normal because it is yeah. about natural and on this planet and this life, what we live in the universe, we can call nature. And nature is us and everything that is outside of us. So the nature is the totality of existence. And that means that everything that has been happening in the history, if we put a time frame on it, on it are natural happenings yeah so it's not a laboratorium program <laughs> it's a natural organic unorganic process of creating that what what is yeah 
all of existence. <laughs> Just all of existence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the problem is that in their concept of nature, nature has no beginning and it has no end. Now, the totality of nature, they give the name of one power because they don't talk about uh, uh, the God, like we have the God concept coming from our culture. They talk about powers. And their biggest power, this, this power we just talked about, or I just talked about, they call U Dem. And U is one ring. And Den is, uh, which you would say, uh, D E N in English language. They call U Den. And U Den is the totality of existence and is symbolized by one ring. So now one of the first strong saying in the mythology about the power of Uden is that Uden is a ring. Uden is ever re thing. Uden has always been and Uden will always be. And Uden is the sun. Now, there they say already quite much, and <laughs> you can break your balls on this one. Uh, <clears throat> so that means that everything that is, is in Uden. Everything that has been is in Uden, and everything that will be is in Uden. So the concept of hedendom has not a universal Big Bang. Because why you have a Big Bang when something has ever been and will always be, you don't need any Big Bang. But for the creation of the Earth, the story holds different. Because the Earth, it appeared one time in the history of Uden. So the Earth is created out of Uden. So in that case, if they talk about Big Bang, they should apply it to the Earth and not to the universe. Because the universe has no beginning, it has no end. It is ever re -thing. That means it always renews things, whichever form it takes. When you, when you put it into that perspective, it sounds very similar to what people would call Eden. Do you think that's um, that's what that meaning is? Is the nature of the whole world? And e Eden is a concept that comes later on on the earth in that way, but it comes. It is a translation from Uden because yeah. in the in the book you can take away one ring and you put instead there one e. One A, and now you make A then, E then. Yeah, we say A then. In English, you say E then. Um, by this, you can change the original association, and in that way, you can send people mm. on their respective trips. You have only to change, to change a little in the sound, or you change the mark of a sound, and with that, you can take away its originality and create a new association. Because we human beings, we are living by association. And we can only have good communication if we are understand, if we have understanding for each other's association. So if my association to a particular con concept is totally diametrically opposed to your uh, association with it, uh, we get this kind of political discussion where you never come to a result <laughs> because uh, <laughs> you think you are right and I think I am right. And those two never come to anything. It's almost as if you think you're speaking the same language, but you're actually speaking completely different, yes. like subconscious, intentional yes. languages. Yes. Yes. You know and I see the. I see this as one of the bigger problems of today's, of our time. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, that's the we, problem. We speak like never before. 
<laughs> we can communicate like never before and we have never been sitting in such a bunch of garbage bullshit as we are <laughs> sitting in this moment. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I've noticed that specifically with language, you know, if <laughs> I mean, Hey, I, I wear a tinfoil hat most of the time and the big, bad, <laughs> evil, they, or whatever you want to call it, like the, you know, the people running the show or whatever mm -hmm. seem to have been able to code language in order to kind of, not like make us not realize what intention we're using when we're speaking. It's like, that's kind of my interest in a lot of this is how language seems to either be used for good or almost like twisted and kind of like hijacked in a way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, I think uh, the different segments of society, um, they make their language exclusive. So if you don't speak the biochemist language, you will not understand what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> it's the same with uh, any other subject, bureaucratic language. Mm. I mean, we all get bombed by bureaucratic letters coming from some bureaucratic department. And if you start to read them, if you can read, yeah, because they always go out from that you can read, so they don't send you one tape uh, or whatever. No, they give you one letter and you have to have this kind of bureaucratic education in order to understand what's written there. Yeah, And we are having uh, the language of human being has always been inclusive instead of exclusive. And our time is creating more and more and more exclusive language. Yeah, I mean, if you start to talk about the functioning of computer or on genetics, uh, you lose me completely, man. I mean, I can't <laughs> follow nothing of that subject. Yeah, so then you, according to them, you should first have to go six years to university before you can be part of their communication or conversation, uh, which means exclusivity. And we mm -hmm. all know we only have to look at this world what means exclusive. Yeah, and exclusive, uh, being excluded is something that counts for most of the people on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. You can, of course, give them a TV or, a, or, a, uh, or a, what do you call it? Uh, video tablet, games? Tab <laughs> tablet or video <laughs> games, yeah. whatever, you know. But <laughs> hey, if you speak completely different language, you still look to each other like totally stupid. So <laughs> there is no point. <laughs> yeah, and there I like very much the way that Boxaga uh, is giving information uh, which may be in its foundation because it's about a language and an alphabet, but it's only 29 sounds in their meaning. Now, basically today, I think everybody could learn 29 sounds in their meaning and park them in your brain and you in time of course, nothing made in seven days. In time, you can apply uh, that kind of understanding to every word that exists in whatever language on the planet. And there I find uh, one key which I have been playing with myself in the last 29 years. And I'm a man uh, you can't convince so quickly because the whole reason I went to travel and go away from home was because you didn't really believe anymore in the in the fairy tale you grow up with or the propaganda uh, machine that you have to listen uh, from that day that you go to school. So, of course, there are certain aspects of which which have been very helpful in my life, like to learn about geography for me was a uh, god given <laughs> because I wanted to see the whole planet. Not well, then it's pretty good if you have a bit of geographic knowledge in your brain because it makes traveling uh, or hitchhiking somewhere much more easy when you know which direction you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, there are of course many aspects which has been helpful for us. But I also know that 90% of the things I used, I learned in school, I never applied in my life further on. I never needed it. So then you are wondering that if this is counting for most kids, 
uh, you know, that means also basically we are wasting 90% of our time. So there should be a more simple way of educating people based on natural knowledge by which they could all function according to nature and in the same time uh, have understanding for each other. Yeah, and that means that you are uplifting the communication to one level where you are also uplifting the human being and also the interaction between human beings. Yeah, instead of trying to catch flies from each other uh, so that my profit is bigger than your profit. So I am Jeff Bezos and <laughs> you are only uh, Bill Gates, you know, or whatever, you know. It's like yeah, catching flies of each other and giving value to that in, in a stock market system. For me, it's totally ridiculous. Mm. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that natural way of looking at that natural language almost is like the Tower of Babel, you know? The, the Tower of Rabel. <laughs> Rabel's Tower. Rabel's Tower is one different information system than Babel's Tower. Hmm. Yeah. So, Rabel's Tower, I think you are familiar with the castle of the king and queen in Finland, the ruin that is standing there. I don't know if you really know, but there is one castle which is called Rasabori. Mm -hmm. And Rasabori has different towers, and one of the tower is a bell tower. And from Rabel's tower, it's a little bit like uh, what you in the uh, pagoda style, uh, mm -hmm. which has the same function when you stand under this clock or under this construction over you you could speak with loud voice and thousands of people standing around could hear you so it works like the, the principle of amplifying sound and wow. Ra a, a, who, Ra is not the correct word it's Seppo is a the king is representing Ra, the queen is representing Ra, and that make that they sometimes had to tell something to their surrounding, and they could use their building with the people around, standing around, and in an amplified voice, uh, they could uh, give out the good news. Hmm. Isn't there a lake around it also, so it will amplify yes. even better? So. Yes, of course. There is the, the castle is built on one cast. So one cast is one rock in the landscape, one little bit round rock, roundish rock. So it looks like one Dutch cheese, which we call cast. We call cheese cars. So now in Scandinavia, they call this oh. kind of hill in the landscape or um, uh, bedrock <coughs> construction in the landscape, they call one cars. And when you tell from the cars, you, you, have what you, you are actually presenting the cars tell, yeah, yeah, which you call castle the there. Yeah, but you, yeah, if you say car, we say cars tell. Mm -hmm. You say castle, but you anyway write castel, or you put T-L-E mm -hmm. instead of T-E-L. But anyway, you know, it's like... Well, you said just a very you little to, switch. <laughs> to switch in the brain with the English mm -hmm. a little bit, yeah? So with this kind of building, of course, Rabel's Tower, as an information system in the original Eden time, it was, of course, also existing as one mythological concept under many nations or under all nations on the world before. So uh, to get rid of the association, you change the R into a B and you make Babel instead of Rabel. And now we make this Babylonian speech confusion instead of Rabelonian clearness. <laughs> yeah, I've always, ever since I was a kid, I always wondered why the Tower of Babel, or Babel, I, I used to pronounce it Babel. I'm like, it can't be Babel. Why would they call it Babel? That just means isn't gibberish that, and nothing. Isn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, gee, isn't that funny? <laughs> but it must have something to do with Babylon. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Babu, if, if you look Babu in the written form and now you pronounce it in the English language form, then you get baby. Yeah? yeah. Mm. Baby. And the baby lawn. Yeah. And what, yeah, lawn, lawn, lawn. What, where, where do we find lawn? We have lawn, yeah. lawn, 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 <coughs> lawn, 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 baby lawn or lawn. You have lawn with L I L A W N, <laughs> Babylon, baby lawn. Uh, isn't that a place in the nature where before those ladies who like to have children uh, are going to lie out in the field, in one beautiful field where they have like a uh, crans with seven flower uh, around their head or around them and they are waiting for this guy who is making like one fuck L dance, fuckle, <laughs> fuckle dance who are there in the evening time coming in order to have fun with that girl who like to have one baby, who like to have one child. So it is maybe a little bit uh, <clears throat> hiding something of a system that we had before, mm. where our whole reason to live was uh, to be part of creating the next generation. That was the number one prerogative of human being in order to create history because everybody can understand that when the lady don't want to have children anymore that there is no reason for light to shine within the universe <laughs> because there will, be nobody, said. there will be nobody who will be aware of it or see it that this beauty which is surrounding us is existing so their economy for us it's economy yeah economy is the highest thing no? and then it's interesting to see if you go into the word economy mm. yeah? economy is starts with ek yeah so a b c d e the sound a means ek and ek is what in english is oak tree so all human being belong to ek all human being belong to oak tree so ek u no mi must have to do with making children, not with making money. Right. Of course, mm. of, course you need, of course you need the E of the man, the man E, in order to impregnate that girl so that she can get her baby. <laughs> but there you start to see that associations in the time have been changing. So for us, mm. what, is, what is money for us today... Uh, was not in the concept of the people who lived before. We didn't need any money to exist. We, of course, in their concept, they need money to exist because <laughs> they need to be the eye of the man in order to exist. Mm. Yeah. Then, like this, when you go into the languages, you start to find out that you can that there are incredible jokes actually hidden <laughs> within the language. Well, the puns, the language. Puns are always put down usually, and people say of puns course. are are the lowest form of humor, but of it's course. not true. <laughs> no, it's the highest concept of understanding. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Boom! Un but under it seems to be the way. I love of course, with, with humor and jokes. Uh, it seems course, to be the trickster. Because the understanding <laughs> is when your man e is understanding, then the uh, the understanding must come from when it's standing <laughs> under. <laughs> Yeah, because if it's not standing, it's not possible to take out sperm and make one baby. You know, <laughs> so there is very clear yeah. differentiation in filling in the language, you know. And if you listen today to all this professor who giving beautiful etymologic explanation to the words, <laughs> um, from a Boxaga perspective, we have to smile a little bit. And in the same time, we feel pity for them because they are already trying to work out since 500 years where everything comes from. And with all their system, they haven't been able to really get it because they don't know from which language to start. 
So, of course, you can do that from the English perspective or the Russian or the Chinese or the Hindi. But now there must be one language which is the first language. And then you, I have also to believe my or trust my friend on his green eyes uh, that uh, the first language on the planet is uh, spoken by the Aser because it's a natural language born with the coming into existence of these people and having meaning from that moment that he becomes seven year old. But that is something we can explain further on in the story. <laughs> but it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, we have been talking a little bit about that. You know, if you really boil down the words, it's very like simple and very laughable about when you, we have been doing this a little bit, but <laughs> it's just so. Well, you can go on endlessly. Like yeah. we have been doing it for years. So by the, in the meantime, we have been going through half of the dic dictionary in this kind of thinking according to sound. Mm. Then there is opening one world for you, which it looks like you can't believe. It. No. Really, it shocked me out of my wits, man, yeah. in the beginning. It, because too. you are confronted with natural understanding instead of normal understanding. Now, mm. This is also need some explanation because the word normal in English is coming from the root word normal. So what you call normal in Scandinavia or in Finland, in the south of England, they call normal. And the word nur means the north and mal means one form. So the normal is the form from the north the form of the north yeah it's now, the norm sorry it's it becomes the norm <laughs> yeah yes. of course so the normal <laughs> the becomes norm now when the first human being arrive on the planet they are born in the north in nur in the exact north pole uh, which happened to be on one island in front of the coast of hell and that place you can visit today so no problem to find the old north pole and these people are born within the nature so their normal is their understanding of their function within the nature so their normal is going out and their normal was going on for a long, long, long time until things changed. Like axis of the earth fall over, it went from perpendicular to the position where we are now. Yeah, so not only the earth axis, the galactic axis, which is going also through the earth axis, is falling uh, 23 degree to that point where we are today or some kind of shift program occurred, which make that uh, this old North Pole is lying 30 degrees south from the North Pole that we have today, from new North Pole. So that new situation created automatically a new norm because the connection between, let's say, uh, the brain or the head, which in a family structure resided at the North Pole and the whole rest of the ball is the consequence of the children making program that went out from, the, from those people. The ice time make that we get like a separation between this area of the people in the North and the people living in the tropics because the whole Northern part of the ball become covered with ice like the Southern part of the ball. And that makes that we get a new north, but also a new normal for the people within the ice, who live there in the ice and who become this, uh, what we call today the Caucasian looking people. Uh, they could continue their norm from before because they happen to have the 
characters who are responsible for the procreation of the human being sitting up there. But now they could not have contact to those outside. So in the tropical world, the norm changed. Yeah, in the Arctic world, or in this world up there, from before uh, ice time, uh, you have the uh, first son in the family who is the king, and the first daughter in the family who is the queen, and you have then the ten brothers of the king up to the uh, twelfth, uh, twelfth son who uh, become the children maker. So now, uh, okay, they didn't need any more this 10 brother in between. So they, under the ice time, reduced to seven son and seven daughter. Uh, but now it's not the seven son who is making the children. It's the, uh, if I remember well, it's the second son. And the other five are like assisting. Now outside, in the tropical world, you get that there is the first son of the king become the crown prince and become king when the king dies. And so there the son, first son is and representing the function of king, but also of children maker, which was not existing in the original heathen system, that they will continue basically up there within the ice in the north. Now, then we have that kind of status quo system going on till uh, after ice time. So when ice time on the land start to finish, according to the position of the planet, we are still in ice time. Because it is this situation of the Earth axis falling over that uh, created the, uh, how you call that? Tilt. Yeah, that that the, the tilt create the uh, the possibility for ice to appear on the planet on low level. Yeah, if you go five, six, seven kilometer up, you can have ice up there. It's pretty fresh. The air gets thinner, so we could have had probably ice on the mountain, also in the paradise time. But that we get this kind of massive ice field covering like total continents is something what can only occur when the earth axis come in this position where you are six months turned away from the sun and the other six months the other the southern part of the bowl is turned away from the sun so this position we still have today so people are speculating about coming ice age or going ice age or whatever the fact is that uh, middle Europe 50,000 years ago was still covered under one and a half kilometer of ice. Now, Scandinavia had that 10,000 years ago. So the ice has been receding from the Alps and the Pyrenees towards the north, and it has all the time been receding. And I've seen in my life how it's been receding in Scandinavia, so that also up in Finland, they don't have any more winters like they had in the 1970s. So we see that there is all the time a receding program of ice going on. Ice is melting, which is a hundred percent natural happening within the time frame that Boxaga describes. The ice is supposed to come to an end because the nature is preparing for us to again in the future have the possibility to live the life of the nature where the earth and everything around it is in balance in relation to the sun so that we could create the paradise by ourselves. Not anymore based on the rules and regulations of this human being life coming into existence, but because we have been going to uh, what they call evolution. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have to smile a little bit when I say this kind of thing, because <laughs> the evolution has been bringing us to this point where we are today. Yeah, and now it's very comical that during the same time when the, like, the whole world is turning into some kind of panic zone, 
because we are realizing that, oh, ice is melting. Oh, we have a problem. Um, nature is fucked up because we have been having science creating the scientific world with the norm that become introduced with the Industrial Revolution uh, 1850s. Yeah, so we see that we have one norm before ice time, we get a new norm in different parts of the planet under ice time, then we get the norm uh, of the after ice time period, which is based on agriculture and animal husbandry, and this is going on until, uh, in Europe anyway, uh, the church arrived, in the northern part of the world, where a new information system with new norm become introduced. And we are leaving that up to this new norm, up to, uh, now what shall we say, uh, renaissance, a uh, little bit later, uh, where we start to question a little bit this information system from the church. And we find out by the 17th, 18th century that maybe we should slowly stop uh, to throw people on the fire uh, because we give them some kind of stamp, you know, which means that uh, better we throw them on the fire. And these ladies who went to pick leaf in the forest and making concurrence to the, uh, how you call it, uh, the selling of pill and powder um, uh, from, the, uh, from the medical world. That become Armakia. yeah that that become institutionalized uh, uh, after Edendom when the lady become forbidden to take the machla which is in the different plant and leaves of the trees uh, to be able to look after the health of their men and themselves uh, now they start to make pill and powder from that and only the only place where you could do this was within monastery and you start some kind of business program of the selling and buying of medicine where before all lady had access to the nature in order to keep us in order you know now then we get a new norm yeah and that norm is going on we get on the norm 1850s 1830s depending on where you live of the industrial scientific based world which is a new norm and all the time we call all this movement of norm, we call it progress and evolution. But now, just now, we seem to have a problem. We seem to have a problem with the medicine. We seem to have a problem with the climate. We seem to have a problem with industrial waste. We seem to have a problem with pollution. We don't know where the fuck to go with our atomic waste. We don't know where to go with our biological warfare. Uh, and you can go on for hours like this, which is basically the story of my generation. I'm from 10 years after the Second World War. And I think that I have been living the more free life that you could ever live in the history of the human being. When one normal bloke like me from one normal family in Europe, you get a passport and you go and work a couple of months in the steel factory, you collect some money and you can go and visit anywhere on the planet and go to see how other people are living within their norms. Yeah. So if you go from the perspective of Boxaga, uh, to be normal is quite horrible because <laughs> it has been degrading. <laughs> yeah. the life of the people to the extent where they even today are telling us that if you smoke, actually you are a murderer, you know, because you are poisoning the people around you and this same nutcake who say such a thing, uh, don't give a shit for standing three hours on the Santa Monica Highway in the queue or from Amsterdam to Rotterdam in the 100 kilometer queue every morning on the way to the job, you know, and fucking aeroplane flying over you and exhaust fumes from steelworks left, right and center, you know, <laughs> but when I, when I smoke my cigarette or when I smoke my joint or when I smoke anything, you are a criminal, you know, and actually you should be extradited <laughs> from the fucking planet. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw a great, a great picture the other day of like, you know, there's like 15 big jets sitting all together on a runway and every one of them were owned by a bunch of corporations all getting together to talk about climate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, they, 
they were parked in Glasgow yeah. or somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. about yeah. that too. Yeah, yeah. It, it has been the. It was uh, today given out in a Dutch newspaper that it was the most polluted, polluting top in the history of the human being. <laughs> But this is this is what Yake and I have talked about a lot, like about how like that's the game. It's that inversion. It's just it's how it's it's like yeah. a mechanism of some kind. It's everything so it, is backwards. Yeah. So, so if we talk about normal, and we see that <clears throat> if the normal started here, and we have been moving in time for one particular period, and now our normal is there. So it is 180 degree opposite of the norm we started with, uh, then we are in really big shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's more of a and devolution than yeah, of uh, course evolution. It is, of course. Everything is 180 Everything. degrees flip. Yes, so we have been having status quo in the paradise time, yeah, before ice time. Yeah, and there I want to jump in uh, to make a little clarification for you, or at least... Uh, a possibility to think in a different way um, Please. because because they talk about evolution so if, if we have been going to that side where we now find ourselves as one global family into big shit into big, really impatient shit no? we really have a problem no? because we are many people and we feel that everybody deserves a good life you know but that means the only way to create one decent life for all human beings on this planet is that we are following the powers of nature and the natural law in order for to exist in such a way that we can have an harmonious existence together with all the different grasses, the different trees, the different birds, the different animals, the different incense, the different microbes, all of them exist everything exists and has a reason to exist and we are the only one who can talk about it and be the guardians of it yeah so our role uh, was uh, uh, basically in the title of uh, of what the author say about their own area when they talk about asgord Mm. The garden of the Aser, the garden of Ude. Asgard, okay. Asgard. Wow. The garden of Gord Ude. Garden. We are the guardians, but we are also the, the, so we are the caretakers. We take care. Yeah. And yeah. to take care, you have to, you can only do when you look somebody in the eye, you know, because you can't take care of that what you don't know about. No. Yeah. No, then we can. I just go on a little bit with my no. monologue. Uh, I bullshit. thought Andy was gonna say something. No, no, <laughs> by all means, anytime. Else jump in. <laughs> hey, guys, <laughs> really, eh? you can always say, Hey, now you shut up and I jump in. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> because we, uh, otherwise, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic listening this is awesome uh, I'm, I'm just thinking you know it's so fun that those big corporations like uh, Siemens for example then you have this fine uh, type care for life or something they say oh. it's always this what you are talking about but they at the same time they had factories in the, in the concentration camps in Germany in the fifth, uh, 40 uh, yeah during the, <laughs> the Hitler era so, <laughs> so I mean it's so uh, and then every, what, everything is backwards so. and then look what's going on now in the world and they're calling that the new normal yeah they are talking about this too ah okay yeah. no if they talk about new no, new normal let's base it a little bit on the history so that we can be maybe part of creating some kind of new normal for them which is based on the understanding of older norms from the past yeah, mm. an, a, an, mm -hmm. another understanding. Yeah, and another understanding uh, is something uh, where Boxaga can do a great thing because Boxaga is destroying all taboo that exists. All, mm. all. There is not one taboo on this planet which will not be destroyed by this concept of Bok Saga. And it's not me doing it or anybody else doing it. It is our language when we start to investigate that will destroy all the norm that exists. 
Yeah, and there is the beauty of Boxaga because we are all human beings, we are all normal. Yeah, I mean, we don't like to be normal, but <laughs> we are, we can't do nothing for the fact that we are normal. Yeah, I am more normal than anybody you can meet in your life. You know? Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe the neighbors don't agree, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I also been born in one family. I have also sister. I have also one papa and one mama. I also been to school. Uh, I also eat with uh, knife and fork and spoon and finger, uh, depending in which culture I am. So I can adapt my norm in many different places because I lived in five different continents. So for me, kind of easy to move around in different style. It's no problem to sit on the floor or to sit in one chair or uh, to climb in the tree or uh, dig one hole in the ground. So all these <laughs> different norms have been passing in your life and it makes that you can act your norm in different places. There where their norm, you have always to adapt to the norm of the area where you live. Otherwise you are in conflict with your surrounding. And I don't like conflict. I'm against, I'm a pacifist. I don't want <laughs> to have conflict. So anyway. if, they, if they ask me to take my shoes off when I come in their temple, of course I take my shoes off. It's not something I have to discuss. It's something I follow automatically. Yeah. Uh, and also, when sometimes uh, they ask things from you which you think that uh, hey, now I had it, you know, like now they start to touch my taboos and my borders, you know. But <laughs> okay, if the people are friendly and they mean well, you know, so hey, you give them a chance also, you know, why not? Mm. But yeah, to go to before Einstein, because we are talking about that we throw, you throw the word evolution and the concept of evolution is something of, is a bit uh, the one going from primitive to very intelligent. Now, if we see that the intelligence of the last 200 years um, has been according to the norm, intelligent from a scientific perspective yeah because if it's not scientific it can't be intelligent no? yeah because then it belongs to a belief system or a misunderstood system or whatever you know um so we superior people of uh, the beginning of the 21st century uh, you know in the school you learn that we never been as intelligent as today yeah, but it's the same people who make that we are living under the umbrella of uh, atomic bombs, uh, nuclear power plants, uh, plastic fantastic, uh, ineatable food, uh, slaughterhouse five over the whole planet, you know, because uh, every cow has to be transferred into a McDonald's hamburger or whatever, you know. So... <clears throat> We are living in one system where the respect for that what is nature has totally gone. And they, we call it intelligent because we have been optimizing the production processes. So it costs as little as possible to have as much advantage to all segments of life. Now, uh, I would disagree with that kind for that form of intelligence because uh, it is purely egotistic. It is only looking at yourself and your form of life and your thing and I'm so fantastic and I'm doing so great. And in the same time, you accept the, the suffering of 80-90% of the people on the planet who have no chance, you know, because the land is bought from under their asses and the trees that grow on the land are sold from under their asses and their water is being polluted. And, you know, it's the same old story. Uh, yeah, destruction totally, uh, and the profit for us. Yeah, so it's something what became norm with the start of colonialization on this planet. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the colonialization made that you could create a system where you uh, made shopping for nothing and you sold your product for the highest price somewhere else on the planet. Yeah. And that is the basis of our economic system of today. Uh, now, in the same time, uh, we learn from the religion that we, uh, you know, you, uh, 
uh, you have to be friendly to your neighbor and you have to give respect to this and blah, 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 blah. Now, with all those words, we can all agree. Everybody can agree with the principles that religions put out of how to relate to your neighbor, you know. But then if you see that in the same time, uh, we are selling our uh, grandparents, grandmothers, uh, neighbors, uh, we sell everything because everything is for sale, you know, because, uh, yeah, uh, uh, money talks and bullshit walks, no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we are more of the bullshitting department. Yeah, you, uh, because, I'm sorry, cut sorry. It. I, actually, I we were we were talking about money, and we're kind of talking about it now, and how this whole perversion has happened to the concept of economy. And I think it was Jim Chesner made a video one time talking about a more ancient, and maybe it was derived from Box Saga, a, a money system that where like the coins were passed out to the people it went around to keep the flow going but then all the coins were turned in at the end of the year and then new coins were passed out it wasn't that the coins were passed in for the king to collect wealth it was just that those old coins were now like collectibles or something but they didn't they didn't go into circulation and it was like just a just almost like an energy flow system yes. rather does, what what was he referring to was that Bach, think, like what, was think, that from the ice time no no i think he refers to the feudal time so that is oh, the okay. period that ends uh with the industrialization and uh, uh yeah i think we can say like that it's like in the 18th century we had still in the countryside uh, the people didn't have money because they did not need money Mm -hmm. So if you go to this box saga five caste system, what we had, yeah, we have pirouette, rouge, et, yal, et, kal, et, trail, et. Uh, let's say in 1500, we still have this 1400, 1500, we have this kind of five caste system still existing. Uh, later on, it becomes this two caste within the town and three on the countryside. Now, if we go to this countryside, you have this guy who, uh, uh, this guy who is landowner by order of the king to take care of all people living on his land. So he has these two lowest castes under him. Yeah. <laughs> so, now. This landowner or this earl, I think you would call him earl in English, you know, this guy, he has one piece of property, huge piece of property. He's appointed there by the king. The minute he is not treating the people on his land, on that land, well, he become kicked out by the king and the king put somebody else there. Now, this guy, he is instrumental uh, as a connecting person to the people living on the land and the people living in the town. So in the town you have the burger and the handicraft people. And now the handicraft people, they can make uh, the pots and the pans and uh, all the different thing, what you need for your daily life, which you could not make in the countryside, because in the countryside you have the fields where you grow the food. Now the town doesn't grow food because the town is the town it is outside of the town you can grow the food but then you live on the land and you belong to this other caste of people so now this landowner or this land caretaker in by order of the king he make overproduction on his land because the people on his land the lowest caste they are uh, producing for themselves only for themselves so they are self-employed they are yeah how do you call this today um, yeah. self-employed okay yeah. self-employed they look after their own shit no and they grow <laughs> they could take as much wood as they need from the forest to build their house and have their fire uh, they could have a cow they could have pig they could have uh, sheep uh, and uh, they didn't have to pay tax. Uh, they just live out in the nature, taking care of themselves, and they could use the nature and some animal. 
by which they could give a certain quality to their life. Wool from the sheep to make food, uh, milk from the cow to make butter, and so on and so on. Now, this second lower, this second cast from the bottom, they do the same thing. They look also after themselves, but now from every family, one person is working 30 day, 13 days on the land of the landowner, of the earl. Yeah, so every family, one man has to be put forward and he can go to work on the land of the landowner in order to, on his land, make overproduction that they bring to the town. So he sell that for coin to the town. And now with that coin that he get from this handicraft burger people in the town, uh, he have to provide all the people on his land. Yes, so from himself plus these two cars below, he has to provide them with everything what these people can't make on their land. So they, if they can't make salt, he has to bring salt for those coins. And he has to bring pepper, and he has to bring glass, and he has to bring pots and pans, and uh, uh, everything what the people can't make by themselves on the countryside. So now, in the end of the year, the tax collector of the king is going around everywhere and he collects all coin. And they go back in the treasury. And now on the 1st of January, the system starts again. So you use this money without money value. It right. is only one means of exchange in order to be able that everybody is provided with everything what they need. Now, if you then start to make that into that system, what we have today, yeah, since uh, two, 250 years, uh, yeah, there are some people start to be in the collecting system because the taxman doesn't come by them to collect everything. They come only by the assholes who are less, the small oh. people in the country <laughs> to collect. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so that's today legal. Yeah, that's legal. Oh so basically, because this is belonging to the system of before, which we call the feudal system, uh, out of the feudal system, because we have a history which is based on a pyramidical structure of society, the parliamentary democracy or any parliamentary system that we start to get after 1850 is still based on the fact that we have always been living in one pyramidical system. And now that pyramidical system in the top is this little triangle which lifts off from the pyramid. And there is this eye where all these coins are floating. Yeah? <laughs> it's in the symbolic of the eye. The all there. It's, it's so symbolical with it. Of course it is very yeah. symbolic. Yeah, it's super symbolic, no? Yeah, Dan, but, Dan and I had uh, a lot. Oh, go ahead, Jake. No, I was going to mention uh, this first Vasa king they called the uh, Husbundekungen. Uh, you know, the Husbunde you are referring to. He's like very interesting detail because he was like caretaker for all, all people through the system you are explaining. With uh, It's just uh, interesting that he's also called Husbundekungen. Yeah. In the in the history book. <laughs> who, who's Bunde is the the who's Bunde? He is like the 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 farmer house. Mm. The Bunde is like a, the farmer and the who's is the house. But the who's Bunde, it sounds very close to what we have today, the husband. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the who's the who's Bunde become the husband, the one who <laughs> yeah. provide for everything, you know. Yes. But now it's one person. And before you have uh, 10 sons and uh, 12 daughters and uh, your brothers and your aunties and you, and you all work all together as one family and you take care of that land and in the same mm. time you take care of each other. And uh, in this fantastic system, what we have today, we become lone rangers, each <laughs> fighting <laughs> for ourselves to keep our head afloat uh, yeah. within the system. Yeah. And wolf packs, of no, course. The, individu the individualism, which comes out of the neoliberalism, no? yeah, which is, of course, the most mm -hmm. fantastic system that we ever had, uh, although it's falling to pieces right in front of our nose right now. So mm -hmm. it is all 
based on concepts that belong to the past. So all what is existing on this planet are belonging to concepts from the past. And now because we have no past, our existence of today, which is limited to 5,000 years of written history, because according to science, it must be written for it to be true. Yeah? Yes. If it's not written, it means, ah, oh, we can't prove it, so it's not scientific, so it can't be. Yeah? But how can you make a future when you have no idea of history and you base it on 5,000 years of concepts depending on the norm of the individual. Yeah, that we just call yeah. his story. <laughs> yeah, it is his story. And we, we are dying within his story now, you know, because that is only his story. Mm. Uh, which story? Story of... Uh, yeah. And it's so conflicted with the, all the different kinds of alternatives. With the reality. You yeah. can't make a future, you can't build a future. So you can see the, also the panic in all layers of society. It's not mm. only the people who is afraid uh, of the economic collapse or of the natural world collapse or uh, the dying out of the lion or the tiger or whatever is dying out. And they are trying to save all the whale, but there is nobody who is saving the people. Mm. Mm. Nobody saved the people. Everything else becomes saved. Every plant, every tree, every insect, every frog. Everything can become saved if you create some kind of... But for the people, we have no clue because we have no history. So we have no idea because all our life is experimental. 100% hmm. experimental. And we, we see it because the norm periods become shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from, I don't know how many million years before ice time to 50 million under ice time to 10,000 years after ice time to 1,000 uh, years ago introduction of Christianity to 200 years, oh, by us anyway, you know. Yeah, it can be something else in other parts of the world. And up to then to 200 year industrialization and now uh, 30 year, uh, 40 year of neoliberalism. And now we are in the end. Mm. Yeah, because nobody knows what to do. The only thing we can do is put some guy who have the money for it, put him in a rocket and send him to outer space, have a look outside and uh, make, make them fantasize about planet B. Mm. Yeah, but there is yeah. no plan. Planet Seems B. to be a lot about that yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, it's wishful thinking. It's just more of the dehumanization thing. It, it include, it now it in includes the Earth. Like, oh, well, let's just leave that behind too. Hmm. Along with our bodies, eventually, you know, but <laughs> that's of an entirely course. different conversation. Of but um, Dan and I were had had a very long phone conversation last night. We came to a lot of interesting points, and we kept talking about how linguistically, when we get into this stuff, you and you follow it through history, you start to see that everything we consider good or evil is not only inverted, but it's all just blended and mixed and forgotten you know it 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 almost leaves us with like uh you know a lot of people who are desperately kind of overall looking for a big bad guy or cause to all the suffering yeah. we really <laughs> it doesn't seem like we can point to anybody because it seems like it's all just Oh. Hu human loss of memory and confusion. What would and you translations say? And translations yeah. and yeah. translation, translations, and it you know and it you takes the guts out of conspiracy the, theory. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a mess to try to discover something in the old text also because like the mind at that time is so different from now. So the translations will yeah. anyway be a little bit no, from I mean, the from today's mind. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there is a very good point. Like. <laughs> For us to look at history, we are starting with ourselves, yeah. with our norm, and now we go to look backward with our norm, judging the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly so, like that. In that yep. way, we can never find out anything. And now, yep. Boxaga is the most brilliant thing because it starts with the birth of the first human being on the planet, or even before that, it starts with how this planet become how this planet become is what this story starts with. How come this ball? And it <coughs> describes how this ball come. 
how this ball was like like one egg floating in the universe, uh, like a sun, mm. like a small sun that exploded, and out of that explosion, the plasma, which is the interior of the sun, transformed in the explosion into magma, and the magma is cooling oh. off, and the atmosphere is created around this magma bowl in the explosion of this small sun. So the Boxaga tells that before we had two suns, one big one and one small one. And we can find that out from the name of the seven islands, which are called the Sun Islands, that are <laughs> right in front of the coast of Helsinki. And if you go in the original names of this, you will find out the whole system of why we have this earth and this meridian, merid, meridional division of the planet and how we get our clock and how we everything based on ring and pole is rolling out from one point <laughs> where you are a three-dimensional being. You are standing on the North Pole. When you are standing on the North Pole, you can only go south. There is no east and west. There is only south when you are on the North Pole. Everywhere you go, you go south. Right. But now, in order to make a division for the people who don't live in the North Pole, you make east and west. So you make west Sun Island and you make east Sun Island and you make big Sun Island and you make small Sun. And you, there's all these names in these islands uh, where you can see some kind of 3D perspective of the whole space you are in it. And when you look up, the North Star is right on above your head when you are at the North Pole. When you stand in the North Pole, the North Star is right above your head. So you can start to think in one way of ring and pole, and that's what comes out of the pole, which is the North Star. Now, if you with pole, the, the word pole, <laughs> it's come from an anatomic part of our body. And that is that moment when this little worm, what is hanging there, cold when it's coming out of the water, it's a wrinkly little worm. And now this makes one pole stunt. It means that it's standing up. Yeah, it's standing. And now on top of your pole, there is one hole, which is like one eye. Yeah, so the human being has two eyes on his upper head, but on the down head, we have also one eye called, the third, called the third eye. <laughs> Cyclops, the third <laughs> eye. So the third eye is not here. That's only symbolic. They put it here. The third eye is there where the sperm come from, which is your two, two tot, no, your tot M pole and your thinking pole. Thinking oh, pole. <laughs> yeah. So it is from the sperm that we become into life as human being. So we are all born from the third eye, and our thinking and talking capacity is also coming from that same stuff. Yeah, so because it's the origin of, of us, so it has to. <laughs> of course. So that is the reason why they from seven year old learn these boys and these girls to they go to one school called parental school or family school where you become educated on how to use your equipment. That's the first thing you learn <laughs> when you go to school is how to take care of your equipment, your sexual equipment. Yeah, because by us, this is under the blanket, uh, covered with clothes, uh, covered with shame, uh, covered with everything. But what the fuck is the difference between my prick and my middle finger and my nose and my ear and the hair? And there is no difference. It's just a different part of my body. But it is covered with shame and perversion through the information system of that what has been visiting our planet in the last couple of thousand years. And you can see how further they are away 
from their openness and their acceptance of their body, the more perverted they are in their upstairs head. Well, so just real quick, real Uh, quick, an interesting point on this is that like, you know, in, in our alternative news kind of community, we're, we're often finding like terrifying stories of, of textbooks now teaching this exact thing to younger children and we're of everyone's we're all scared i mean i'm, I'm a parent it's freaky and it's like from a modern eye that we've been in, ingrained in of course it's so it's such a touchy subject i think i brought it up in our first episode it's like you yeah. can't get around talking yeah, yeah. about it though it's you know so it's no. it's like yeah go ahead yeah, I, I didn't I don't want to insult anybody with this. Eh? I don't no, want to criticize no. anybody. It is just one form of speech in order to make one point that if we are not willing to accept that every part of our body has a meaning, because our language is formed around the naming of the parts of this particular parts of the male and the female. Mm-hmm in order to go out in the world with an open with open eyes yeah and uh, because if we are going out from the fact that from the beginning we were all brother and sister and uh, uh, cousins and uh, nieces and whatever we are it's all in the family Mm -hmm. so what is there to be ashamed of yeah it is Mm -hmm. just the separation between human being what has been creating this kind of thing and maybe sometime i'm a little bit of a loud mouth uh, saying uh, what i think when i maybe should but it's so true i'm thinking no, like no, if, yeah. within the family go into the sauna all naked correct it doesn't matter yeah. so, so so it yeah that's it you have this fantastic thing only in scandinavia and russia in the northern part of the world is the only place where the people on the planet are used to see each other naked and everybody in the family you meet naked in the sauna. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now today you must have uh, swimming trousers on and uh, yeah, because oh, if they see you naked. In <laughs> Finland, uh, tw- 30 years ago, it was forbidden to have any piece of cloth material in the sauna. 30, 40 years ago. And from 40 years ago, again, from the middle of the 80s, this started to change because uh, the boys, uh, the mothers tell to the boys, uh, that uh, you have to put on swimming trousers when you go in the sauna because this mother has been divorced from her husband and now she wants to protect her son for all these people, uh, all this Hindi who is in the sauna, who, who uh, you know, uh, you have to be afraid for all these men who is looking to your dick because they probably want something from you. This totally perverted way of thinking, which has also reached Scandinavia and Russia, you know, mm. just now. It's, yeah, where before seems to be it was, all over the place. Yeah, it's all over the world. It's yeah. all over the world, you know. That is why we had so nice time in, uh, in Goa in the 1970s and 80s, uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, when you could be naked. It was the only place outside of Russia and, and uh, Finland where you could be naked. Uh, on the beach without to uh, have any shame feeling or anything so for me i was 19 uh, when i come there in 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 this place and i find one place where you could be bare assed on the beach and also the local was walking around still naked Uh, okay if you go in in the bar bar bar. (laughs) when you go in in the village of course (laughs) you put one lungi around when you go in the tea house in order not to shock the girls in the village because you have this big ball and which is of course (laughs) like yeah i mean we are not cows or bulls you know i mean we are just human being and we have different size small size big size medium (laughs) size any size any form doesn't matter the interesting thing is that all these different size and form have name in the root language. <laughs> yeah. So they are telling us something because these names consist of sound and these sounds have a meaning. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is like, is there a significance to the sauna more, more so than, than just loosening up your muscles in, in the cold climate? 
is there is there more of a spiritual thing to it or is there yes. other meta, uh, metaphysical things to it um and can you explain those yes ones? i can the <clears throat> word sa sauna is from before ice time but now before ice time we have another type we have two type of sauna because sauna consists of sa u na sa u na sa uh, now in the finnish language you have one concept called uh, sauna not which in finnish is sauna solmu sauna solmu now sauna solmu means that you can put your <laughs> knees behind your shoulder and your feet in Jesus your neck <laughs> <laughs> and then you are making one yoga asana position ah. with your feet in your neck and when you can relax you can if you have good feeling make your equipment to stand and then you can suck yourself suck yourself you can suck <laughs> from yourself oh you, suck. success you, uh, suck, suck ra. succeed suck ra. Suck ra. Suck ra. Suck ra. so you are opening your sakra you're opening your sakra <laughs> holy, holy <shit>. shit. <laughs> <laughs> now you can make uh, oh now you God. can now you can go with your tongue around your uh, your acorn around your acorn no? in root language and you can drink from yourself now this your is acorn a, your like your pine your pine cone correct no, the, the acorn <laughs> acorn yeah. ac it looks like that acorn 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 the oak seed the, the oak, oak seed oh. the oak seed it looks exactly like the, the forehead. So that's, the oak seed yeah. is the smooth part on the top, and then comes the skin part, uh, which you can take up and up and down. Yeah, and that gives good feeling because the ring of your helmet is the most sensitive part of the body by the man, and it's the same with the clitoris in the ladies department so this is why we call this part of our body the heart right and this part here this is we call pump so with religion they have transferred our heart which is the most sensitive part of our body to that part which is the pump which is pumping the blood around in your body now, to go back a little bit to the sauna solmu position is something that you start to learn. The mamas educate the boys when they are seven year old to make this yoga position because when you are seven years old, you are like one rubber ball and you can do it. And now you do it every day because there is nothing more pleasurable for any bo boy than he can put himself in this position and suck himself off the goal is of course to come to an orgasm so that sperm comes out and you drink it and now you circulate it within your body because now the sperm goes in your stomach and in the stomach it becomes broken down and comes in the blood system of the body and now the pump is pumping the blood to every cell of the body, also the brain cell. So now the sperm, via the blood, this fulgia, which is within the sperm, and the air, which is within the sperm, this ra, is coming into contact with all your, the cellular structure of your body. And there it is, uh, reinforcing uh, the cellular structure because the ce every cell has information and because this information is based on that sperm that goes into one egg with the conception and now the sperm starts to eat 
the starts to eat the the egg and the cell division starts and we become either one boy or one girl now through this practice by the boy the sperm and by the girl from her juice from the sap they are re connecting every cell of the body with its original information and that make the cell to work 100% to its optimum and this we call the immune system but the immune is when you put your e or your i yeah your e in uh, in in root i in english this e is your uh, symbol for the pole and now when you put it in your moon because this is your moon in the root language your mouth so your immune system is based <laughs> on putting the e in your moon <laughs> so that sperm goes around via the blood pumped around by the pump and in that way reinvigorating your cellular structure so that you are completely independent from the whole nature around you you just you just can't make this stuff up no you can't <laughs> make it up no so now this like, person, like how, how do you make stuff up like that like this <laughs> <laughs> The sperm is coming from the third eye. Yeah, and you can open your third eye, they say, and everything will be okay, isn't it? According to the textbooks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the men have the third eye and the lady has their third eye, and their third eye works on a different uh uh I don't know. We can say that the masculine brain it runs on diesel, and that one of the ladies on <laughs> on, ben, on benzene. It's like the difference between the sperm and the machla. It both contains this ra element, yeah, which is this fulgia element is for procreation, but this ra element is for talking, thinking, uh, talking for. K sera sera. Yes, K sera. <laughs> you are well, fantastic, great. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Hey, so fantastic. switching gears a bit, I had a question that I think I brought up in our first episode, or maybe off the air with these guys. But um, so it's I, in my brain, who's just trying to get used to all of this information still. Uh, I'm finding that, what is it? Is it that the, the term lemonkind and is part of Finnish mythology like already without box saga? Is that, am I misunderstanding that? Cause I've seen lemonkind and correct refer re beautiful paintings and this and that. Yes. So can can we kind of explain that a little bit for people, especially people that know even less than I do let's give some some structure to this a little bit yeah please um, Michel is good with i wonder if i should finish the sauna solmu program oh yeah, sure yes, sure yes. sure let's do that first <laughs> glad i got we do that, that. I we do that it's just a little story still because we <laughs> sure, have now sure. the, we have the sauna as the concept of sauna as one building with hot water and you can sweat there but sa una solmu the sauna not is that position where you can drink from yourself this yogic exercise. The whole reason why people make yoga is to learn this particular asana. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very easy to do when you are seven years old and you can put yourself in that position because you are still rubbery. Now, the word sa means you get. U means uden. And na means asarnas knowledge. Mm -hmm. N stands for the North Star. The sound N is Nur Chernan, the North Star. But it's the symbol for knowledge, all knowledge. So, Sa U Na, Sol Mu, Sul Mus, means that you, when you put yourself in this position of Sa Na Sol Mus, that you get from Uden the knowledge of Aser. 
which is a large concept, the knowledge of art. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very large concept. <laughs> so the, it has to do with knowledge about all. So that is that the word sauna is coming from this knot because your blood circulation is going up. You need to have good blood circulation for to get blood in all the part of the body. Mm. Now, the position is helping there, and of course also the heat of one sauna building. The sauna building is different from the sauna knot. The sauna knot is personal. The sauna building is one community place uh, for washing and for other practices. We won't go into it now straight away, because otherwise... Uh, it starts to get a little bit too much maybe in this moment. But the <laughs> word itself, sauna, it has to do with, not with that building, but with drinking from yourself, of offering from yourself to yourself. That's the first step in the sexual education of the boys and girls in the Eden time, is to offer from yourself to yourself. Now, you can't hurt anybody with that. Yeah? No. It's your private business. Sure. Yeah. Then we come to the concept of this Lemminkainen. Uh, Lemminkainen, there's many different names which you will find in the Boxaga. And uh, before I hear about Boxaga 1984, I had the pleasure of visiting Finland already over a period of nine years. So I also come in different building and museum where I become confronted with painting that are made in the period of the end of the 19th century, beginning of 20th century by different artists and people from Finland. And I become confronted with the biggest epos that exists on the planet, which is the Kalevala, which is a collection of poems uh, collected by one guy called Elias Lönnrot in the 1830s. So he was going around the forest of Finland and Russia and collecting those stories that were living as oral traditions within the people of the Finnish people living in the forest. So that's mostly the people outside of Udenma. Udenma is this southern province, this <coughs> ringland, but there you have many other ringland around in Finland, direction Russia. Now, or provinces, we call them today. Now, under all these people, he collects poems, and there the main characters are Ukko Weinemönen, Seppo Ilmarinen, and Pukki Lemminkainen. So, and there is Maya, and there is Joutsen, and there is Sampo, and there is Aino, and they have all kinds of weird associations within this epos which is made up of all these collected stories that were still existing in the Finnish forest in the 19th century. Now, because this guy made this book with the names of this character, but with one quite uh, centralized version of presenting those forest stories, because it had to fit in the 19th century still within the norm and realm of the Catholic way of thinking or the Christian way of thinking, because you couldn't publish anything negative in relation to the church in the 19th century, because they still had the power of censorship in the 19th century. It's first the 20th century where they lost this. So they make this Maya to be a little bit like Maria. And in this way, they kind of, the stories kind of fit in the 19 beginning 20th century brain of the people now of it's course like Tolkien they, also yes same thing same thing Tolkien hmm. Tolkien 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 <laughs> Tolkien and it's one village in uh, east from Udenma no? Tolkien <laughs> Tolkien and yeah and oh. these people that but he was know, interested in those stories right he was or, absolutely fascinated with Finnish folk or did he yeah. have access to the archive perhaps I think that he even or his family originate from Tolkien Tolkien and they in in the third third Ragnarok 1050 
uh, many people, uh, many of the Azer uh, or, or the people who had to do with them, they swam out to the islands because these middle European soldiers, they couldn't swim. So they swam out to the islands and they hide there and they become collected uh, 1061 by the Danish Viking and become transported uh, by the Danish uh, they, they collect all these people who had escaped 1050 to the islands or after 1050 and they use them as rowers in the Battle of Hastings. And those that survived, uh, they could start with their family name uh, coming from their village if they could remember it and continue their life in England and get some kind of, you know, and 600 years later on, he's writing book about uh, but he comes from that area, otherwise he wouldn't have that inspiration. You don't get it if you have no connection. No, that's true. Yeah. So Tolkien, I think he comes from Tolkien and his family, not him. Everyone personally. is from Finland. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody comes from Samposper. Everybody born Seems from Samposper. <laughs> this is the joke of the Finnish uh, of the Box Saga, that we are all born from Samposper. Except Jesus. Jesus. According to uh, the information system. <laughs> yeah, but Jesus, he didn't have any father, so. <laughs> no, he was visited by the Holy Spirit. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you know, come on. I'm j just joking, of course. Yeah, yeah. Bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, a little yes, joke. Yeah. <laughs> must, must, must be possible, you know. In Holland, we are quite free to talk about this kind of thing because uh, they don't cut yeah. off your head straight away when you no, say no, something no. jokey about Jesus, you know. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, if you look at these uh, figures of uh, Bijnemönen and Seppo Ilmarin and uh, Puki Lemmingain and uh, Jotsen, Suometar, uh, Sampo, Aino, uh, they are the literal Finnish translations of the characters which in the root mythology we talk about Sul Bok and Balder, Moon Bok and Balder, uh, Swan, uh, Swan, Gubbe, uh, Gumma, uh, Gubben, Bal, Gubben, Per, Bal, Gumman, Ella. They are one and one translations. Uh, or not even not translations, but the same concept, just yeah. in a different language. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting when you go in these names. Now, without this guy, Elias Lundrud, who has been collecting all this poem from the forest, in the by the middle of the 20th century, we nobody would know that even Bynamon and Ilmarin and Lemminkainen would exist. Mm. Because... It's just because of him putting them in a book, which is called Kalevala, which is the very famous Finnish epos. Uh, it's just a bastardization of the epos of Boxaga, of the Eden time. Mm. Yeah. But uh, didn't it have to do with uh, some kind of uh, with the creation of Finland also that they wanted to... When it's separated from Sweden, I think it's... Of course it gives them... Yeah, but it's just later. Uh, you know, okay, no, you're right. It's 1809 that uh, Finland become part of Russia. Oh, so of Russia, yeah. up from 1250 or from 1050 to 1809, uh, Finland is part of Sweden. And from 1809 to 1917, it's part of Russia. Mm. And uh, Lenin make them to be independent because there was too much a pain in their ass for <laughs> the system that he wanted to create in yeah. uh, in this uh, Petersburg Mos Moscow program. They didn't like the Finnish, I, I heard. No, they liked them. I mean, the Finnish was highly respected, but the Finnish had been living uh, 700 years with Swedish law. Mm. So you could never put this kind of tsaritsi, tsa, tsari, uh, tsarist law Mm -hmm. on these Finnish people because you would not get support from the, let's say, higher caste people in Finland who you need to run in mm -hmm. a bureaucratic way one country. So you must always be friend with the people, which in Sweden was very easy because yeah. the Swedish and the root is practically the same. The root have not the accent of the Swedish because the Swedish are singing the root. So in Finnish, we call the Swedish language the root sinkieli. 
because they sing the root, where Boxing. the root is just root. Root is like Dutch, uh, you speak on one tone, mm. kind of, and, uh, you know, it's not like, <laughs> like you can hear <laughs> in the English, the Welsh, the Welsh yeah. people, they also sing. So you see that the Welsh have some origin with the Swedish people because they also are talking a little bit in this funny way of going up and down with the leg, you know. Uh, if mm. you listen to Welsh yeah. people, you can find this kind of nuance. Yeah. Wow. Man, the, the dialects, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Very no, that, that is funny. But the root is, yeah, for me, very easy mm. because it's very close to Dutch also. But it's so, so clear me, when you speak like yeah, that. Yeah, you, don't need to, you don't need to use so much words to say no. anything. No, no, you can say almost every... Me, me with my small uh, word uh, vocabulary, I can understand or speak mm. uh, with them easily. Yeah, I mean, I'm not native from there, but for me to speak with them after a couple of years was already easy. Yeah. Just listening, you know, and find out that, okay. And then you can read also oh, the Swedish or... But then you go to Stockholm and you don't understand the action. And then I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand it because they speak so funny. They have so funny yeah. pronunciation. It's like the English. They change in the Yeah, they South. twist. Uh, like yeah. we say rev for fox. But down yeah. in Stockholm, they say rev. Yeah, <laughs> they, they put an e instead of a. Uh. Yeah, but, it's rev. Yeah, it's rev. It's rev in Österbotten, in the Finnish side, in the north. north yeah, we say also northwest. rev. Rev. But you can also have rev because you have reval. Reval in the Estonian. Yeah, reval. Yeah, 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 yeah. Reval. Like or, the or the revival. Yeah. The, so, the, 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 the guy who comp competes with you on the exact same <coughs> like that. Yeah. Seems like rival. Yeah, yeah rival. Mm. Yeah. Rivalry. Rivalry. <laughs> Rivalry. Wow, man. You I, I really again. love how you can get so many stories just from one word yeah, so it's fascinating it's, oh it's so bad it's too much then a really... uh, uh, one word that we we seem to talk about a lot is the word uh nephilim <sighs> yeah the nephilim what do you make of that nephilim yeah. or nephilim we yeah. we always wonder if there's like a connection between the two words seems yes. to be because of the the giants or the ice giants it's the same so I was wondering if there's any uh, like Bach meaning behind. Yeah, you mean the the, the Nephilim. Well, you have the uh, Nephilim, okay, yeah. the place. Yeah, and, like in the Scandinavian. Yeah, and then you have the Nephilim, which is Nephilim. a conspiracy theory, hot topic all the time, forever. You know, <laughs> I yeah, yeah, they came from uh, star <laughs> systems. Yeah, the giants, the fallen 65. angels. <laughs> <laughs> it's very simple. Yeah, the Nephilim, the as the people. The, is the Aser and uh, or the Gudar and the Gudinnor, the gods and goddesses who are people. Yeah, we are they are not abstraction, they are people. So we have Gudar, Gudar, are good, Gudar, mm. Gudar, are good. So the mythology doesn't know God because the or the saga, because God is that what you got already. Yeah, but Gudar is our good. So a Gudar is the plural of good a. Good a. Good. -e. And good -e means you are a good man. Cheese. Good. 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 good yeah. So good the Gudar, the plural of Gudar. The, the plural of God of God is Gudar. And Gudar, because they are plural, because they don't exist as singular, you have three Gudar, masculine, and you have three Gudinnor, feminine. Now, Gudar are good, and Gudinnor are good in nor. The same normal concept what we talked about in the beginning. Uh -huh. Uh, to this evening, no? So they are the good in the north, are the goddesses, the good okay. in the north. Yeah. yeah, if you in the this makes language. sense for me. But... Yes, for his brain, very easy to grasp, straight, you know, <laughs> but it needs little explanation in English. Yeah, yeah sometimes, so, yeah. So, good are is plural, 
and Gudinnar is also plural because we have Himmelgudar and Himmel or Himmelgude and Himmelgudinna, the heavenly God and the heavenly goddess, which is the uh, Ukko and the Akka in the Finnish language or the Gubbe and the Gumma in the root language. So they are like the grandparents. Then you have Fruktbarheit Guda and Fruktbarheit Gudinna. Now that is the fertility uh, good and the fertility goodness. And that is Lemminkainen and Jotze, or Balder and Swan, as they are called in the root language. Bal there is always pointing to Bal there. It's that's where your whole construction is called Bal. So that is why the area where this is playing is Baltic. Mm. Yeah, the Baltic Sea or the Baltic, uh, what we have more on Bal. We have Balkan. Yeah, Bal the ba Balkan. 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 Yeah. Yes. Oh, Balcony also, of course. The Balcony is the Bal of the Lady. The Balcony. <laughs> oh. yeah, the Balcon. The Lady of Balcon. Balcon, which become Balcony. Balcon. <laughs> and, and you the go man, to the Bal also? Yeah, the man of Bal. Yeah, Bal. You go to have one Bal, it's always. It's, Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> this whole part is going to be the ultimate conspiracy theorist trigger because of, of the word ball as B A A L. Yeah, yeah, the like the, yeah the Babylonian the god that eats kids. That is what they make of it in the writing <laughs> system. They put one extra A and then they an extra A, and in that way, it uh, you are moved to the Middle East to Baal back. Yeah, uh, but ball back is. Uh, I want my ball back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it might have something to do with ball and bok, ball bok. Of course, ball bokarna, ball bokarna yeah. are the twelve son of uh, the twelve son are the ball bokarna. So the first son is moon boken balder, moon bok balder, and the twelfth son is sul boken balder, the sun bok balder. Yeah, so it's sulen. Yeah, Sul, we write Sol for you, S-O-L, but you pronounce the ring in root language always as U. And Sul. many times they have been changing in the word uh, to O, like in Finnish many times. Because in Finnish, the, in one language, the ring is O, but that same ring in root is U. Mm. Yeah, so it's like root, double O, it's U. Mm. Like to be... Yeah, or to go to it's with double O, it's U. Sul Oman is is uh, Sul Umun. seed in your mouth. Sul Umun, yeah, Su sun and moon, moon, sun and, sun and moon, but also Sul Imun. Yeah, it's with the same thing, ring in the mouth. This is get back to this sauna solbu program. But this Nephilim yeah. story then. Okay, yes. Nephilim. Nephilim is the people. So the Nephilim are the Gudar, so we have the Himmel Gudar, the heavenly gods, the Fruktbarheit Gudar, and then we have the Sherlex Guda, Gude and Sherlex Gudinna, and that is the king and the queen. So they are the love mm. uh, king and the love queen, because the love, it comes, uh, love is L-A-V, and is coming from V-A-L, Baal. And Baal means election, like Baal Hal A. Baal Hal A is the election hall of the Aser. Because from there, the whole election system of Fulgia, which is breathed in by Lemminkainen, because he is the breather. So he breathes in the air, the air where he is in Valhalla, where is the concentrated fulgia through the rotation of the, of the earth, the centrifugal force is bringing the fulgia from the leaf of the tree back to the North Pole. So today uh, all frigid because North Pole very cold, so fulgia not so much energy for to come down into the people again. But anyway, before Einstein, you have this system that he is breathing in, in Valhalla, over the hole, where is one bog bed, where he makes children 
with uh, the swan, the most healthy and most beauty lady on the planet. And he breathes in air and he breathes out children. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. So the nephil part comes from Naval. Uh, it comes also from Naval, but also from, uh, we have Nebel, or in German, oh, ne Nebel. Nebel. Naval and, would be knowledge of the... Um, oh, yeah, oh. The, to choose the knowledge of Aser is yes. Naval. Oh, man. But we have also Karnaval, or Karneval, and Karnival. There is many different Val in this department but that is for later on guys because otherwise <laughs> that's uh, true you know yeah. because <laughs> it but anyway you can go uh the nifel can also be that moment when uh water what is warmer is confronted with air that is colder and then you get the damp coming from the water. The mist. And the mist. And that phenomena, that nebel, nebula, is very uh, present in the area of the East Sea and the Finnish Gulf. Because first of all, the whole area is surrounded mm. by forest, this land. So it already holds an enormous amount of this damp and humidity in the forest. Then you have the the not really salty water because the East Sea is fed by fed by river systems from Sweden, Finland, Estonia, Russia, Poland. So the water is brackish. So you can mm. even grow potato with that water from the East Sea when you throw it on the land of the farmer in Sweden, Finland, Estonia, Russia, and so on. And that make that because they have tens of thousands of islands. They have this magic coast between mm. Stockholm and Petersburg. There is more than 100,000 islands in front of the coast of Finland, which are granite humps, chocolate belts coming out of the water. Now, if you don't know your way there, and all these <laughs> islands have also trees on them, and, things, and if you don't know your way there, and you are coming from Mediterranean, and you want to do some kind of something, after you have passed between Denmark and Sweden into this East Sea and you plan to go up north, it was, for, first of all, it was forbidden to come there that way, only for the initiated people. And second, you get totally lost, like you get lost in the mist in London uh, in the autumn time. No? And you get the Sherlock Holmes stories with the uh, Nifel, the Nibel, the Nephilim, Nephilim, the so home. The the home of the, the nebula. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the nephil, the nephil home, the nephil. Damn it. Nephilheim. Heim the, is an, It's like yeah. a word for home, also. Yeah. So the nephil <laughs> home. Like some slang, I think. The nephil home. How, how you call nephil? How you call nebul in uh, in English? Uh, the mist. How you call it? Mist. Yeah, just mist. No other yeah. word. No, no other word. I mean, because it sounds no. a lot like nebulous or nebulous. Yes, uh, so. that's fog. why I use nebulous. Fog. Fog. fog, correct. Because we have navel in Dutch. We have navel in German. We have mm. navel in other dialects. So for us, they are all associations to this misty landscape over the water where when you go with your boat and you can't see where the uh, bedrock is under the water, yeah, maybe there is only 10 centimeters. You come with your yeah. boat, you break your boat, then you are lost because you never can come back to Egypt or to... <laughs> so, <laughs> so the, a naval vessel. <laughs> yeah, so the Nephilim is the home of the... or the naval home, which is in the north, or the Acer home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. it is... Uh, it, you know, they call it also... Uh, uh, the hy uh, hyperborean, uh, how you call it? Uh, hyperborean. Uh, Hyperborea. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. This story. It has yeah. also this insight. In it this has many Hyperborea. names, I think. Yeah, yes. many, many, many. I know that the, I think it's uh, the, the Jewish, they uh, have this explanation of uh, hell. 
but they call it Gehenas. I think it's the Jewish, right? Ah, uh, hell but this, that but, sounds familiar. But they explain uh, they uh, explain it's like a swampy place also. Of course it is. Hey, it's <laughs> yeah, it's very super. Swampy. It's Suomi. Suomi means swamp land today. No? Yeah. So, Suo, Suo is the Finnish word for swamp. Sure. Yeah. Which is just so I, I mean, I need to connect these dots out loud or else I'm going to forget them forever. Uh, in the Sumerian mythology, the, the place of Anki, who was represented as the serpent, was always these swamp lands. And then, Dan, you and I were speaking last night that when we break these words down and then further you break the letters down, we were thinking that S at some point had to stand for serpent or snake or something like that, maybe even a verb like slither or are um, we are we on to anything there? Do you uh, think S S is always Sulen. And Sulen mm. means the sun. And yeah. you can split it in two words. Su, this is your su in Finnish language. And len is what you do with your mouth when you smile in root. So this is len and su. So su len means smiling mouth and there is the archetypical magic that when you ask any small kid to draw one sun they always do it with the two eyes and the smiling mouth <laughs> where it's the word saying su lane the sun yeah means oh, wow. smiling mouth <laughs> that's magic no? that's that's, magic. In that's incredible yeah and that magic you can go on all the time like suo is the swamp yeah which you call swamp but mm -hmm. swamp is also another word for mushroom. Swamp. Mm -hmm. So in Middle Europe, swamp, swampen in German language, in many languages, Dutch, Swedish, <coughs> Swedish <coughs> it means the mushroom. Drinking oh. swamp water. What, what, form, <laughs> what form has one mushroom? <laughs> and... <laughs> what you do when in Finnish language, it's suo. Suo means the swamp because the name of for Finland is suo mi. Suo mi. That means su. The o is that which comes out of your mushroom, your swamp. Your suo mi is actually <laughs> telling you to drink from yourself. The name. <laughs> Uh, Toes and circles, but man. In the same time, <laughs> yes. it is it is the swamp, it is the mushroom, the much room. Yeah, the from the much room they create much room in order to take away the association of much room. And if you want to know about much room, you have to come to Gumbustrand. There is one place that has very, very, very much room. <laughs> 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 this is incredible. We need to have you on more, Michel. Yes. <laughs> just, yeah. just, just joking. Uh, no, but that's the way. It's that's the, the way to do way. it, man. <laughs> no, no, it's like really comical, you know. Like now we are making a bit of a confused uh, expedition into <laughs> Boxaka because I never done it like this before. Right. Uh, so this is also interesting for me because usually uh, you start with a two-hour explanation of all kind of things. Yes. But it's an impossible, you know. It's like becomes like an intellectual exercise or something and well, you've so done it before so there's so often, much uh, done on so it now. Yes, yeah. i think that you can get all from tapes that are floating around anyway yeah. but like this way you can go in on a bit more personal emotional mm. feeling it's like you know boxaga is a very nice story because there is nothing negative in boxaga there is not one negative story. It is first becoming a little bit heavy, like I had maybe in the first half hour or so, when you start to translate it to our time and the consequences of what it ha has and our relation to the fact that, yeah, I am one person, uh, I like my country, but uh, I don't want to die for it. <laughs> <laughs> <Absolutely> <laughs> not. 
I don't see any reason for to die for my country or for some god or the king or the queen or the fatherland, which was like a very strong image, has been a strong image in the latter part of our history. Mm. But we, we are more one type of people who want to contribute something to our country, something that people can go further on with than to keep doing the same mistake of our fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, and in that way uh, make the war to be eternal, without that we know what war means. Yeah, Very. because in the saga, war means uh, that it's a period of the year called spring, spring in, in, in English. No? Yeah. Oh. yeah, spring is the period. Isn't that interesting? It, it, yeah. it, gives, it gives life. The, the yeah, war it's period. always complete opposite because it's all the children inverted. came out in the spring. <laughs> it's a natural thing here in the north. Well, because yeah. Yake has told me about that there's a military system oh. that is <laughs> not that's a long one. That's a long one. That's that's a long one. So that's so that is for another time. The Definitely. meal eater. The meal eater program. <laughs> Isn't it the meal eater problem? Yeah. Oh my god. So then it's a <laughs> meal question about what meal are we eating when we are in the meal eater system? The millions of sperma. <laughs> yes, you know, there is the story of the patrol and the corporal and the bardier and the hillebardier and the lancier and uh, the whole artillery. Stuff, the, the art club. The art hilary and the <laughs> infant airy. Uh, oh, you know, dude, yeah, that's definitely another episode. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah but this, awesome. is that's heavy. this is really brilliant. You know, yeah, like we need we to can, take that. That's with the meaning of the sound, we catch them in their falsification of the history. Yes, and I think you yeah. know, the more we do this, yeah, the man. more we and can when, get a when grasp we, on everything. For sure. And when we go in the Finnish language, when we get our Finnish friends on, then we can go in the Finnish. And in the Finnish, uh -huh. there is the whole world of the paradise time. So there you can find out in the language exactly how we was living in paradise time. <laughs> wow. I, mean, I don't know if I want to know it <laughs> Finnish. <laughs> brilliant. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yes, I am. <laughs> I mean, you crack up. It's a crack up. It's like even my limited Finnish was enough in order to make me realize that with this language, you know, that is why these Finnish people is quite interesting subject. For, uh, by the way, it's like these Finnish people have enormous problem with this story because every word they say yeah. when they know the sound system is blasting them from 2021 into more than 50 million years ago. <laughs> and they are just, it paralyzes them in their kala, in their thinking. Mm. Yeah, because what am I saying? Yeah. If I'm, sa I'm, I'm saying like this, but I'm doing like that. It's, it's on the it's, sticks and circles. <laughs> did you say? Did you say? What did you say for head? Did, what was that word? Tella. Uh, no, the thinking is kella. 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 Okay. Kella has to do with clock. Yeah. So. Kello is clock, and kella it's like that. What the clock does? It. Mm -hmm. Spins. Tick, it's tick, tick, tock. Gears, tick -tock, gears turning. Tick, -tock, tick tock. Wheels turning. Yeah. And yeah, you have all your cell, your brain cell, where you have all your film stored. And now you unwind your film reels from your brain cells and put them in front of your eyes and you throw them out. All the stories you've been listening. Television. Or, yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, no, television is Lukavision. <laughs> Look a vision. Yeah, because they don't tell us any vision. You can just look to it because you can't talk. <laughs> you, you can't talk back. You can't talk back, man. So with television is the wrong word. It's a look of vision. Because if they would tell us a vision, we wouldn't have this problem. You know. So maybe we have to take over television. You know? Television must be oral. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. Ural. It must be ural. Rah. It's like the mountain in between uh, Europe and Siberia. It's the Ural. Ural, yeah. That's Ural. right. So the and there's Ural. a very interesting, yeah. Wow. Yeah, why yeah. are they called Ural? 
Uh, Why are they called ant is? Oh, the ant is 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 the spirit. Hmm. Yeah, the holy duck, the holy spirit, helica anden, the holy duck. <laughs> <laughs> aqua duck. Uh, aqua oh, duck. Oh man, <laughs> it's just gonna. We're just gonna be saying sounds and. <laughs> it would be <laughs> become like uh, small children of the king. It God is. Thing. It is. What you, <laughs> that's what I love about this because yeah. when I first started seeing that, like, okay, naturally, the beginning of everything is going to be the pieces of like you look at how children speak when they're just learning. And Dan, you and I have talked about this yeah. on a number of levels and it's such a natural progression. How can you even deny it? You know, the pieces <laughs> of words come before the words where there's always pieces to the whole. And we're building this fractal fractal world around ourselves. It's cool. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, it's amazing. And this is, been a great that is episode. nice. <laughs> that is nice when you have children. Also, when you have children, you can see this kind of thing happening oh, yeah. around you in yeah. your daily life. You know? Oh, that's the best evidence for the fractal yeah. nature of reality. <laughs> they make their own <laughs> words for stuff, and so yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, and yeah, remember, yeah. I called myself Boopim when I was little, <laughs> for example, for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> like why? Yeah. Boop. Oh man. You should do some like hyp hypnotization and and go find out why you called yourself that. I bet it would be that phonetic for something. Fucking strange. <laughs> no, it's Ooh. nice. Yeah. It's really nice. Man. No, no, it's like where were we? we oh wow! Well. We're coming to the end, though. Yeah. yeah okay. So. Yeah, is... I think this is a good spot right now. Yeah, this is great. If you want to. Yeah, if you want to kind of clean up uh, the whole, uh, how many hours have we been sitting and talking? Two, two hours. Two, and this God. has been perfect. I won't. I don't want to cut yeah. any of this. This has been a great presentation. Yeah, I, awesome. I, I, I would. We would all love if you came back sometime and talked with us. Oh again yes, hey, anytime, sure. Michelle, all the time, pleasure. all the time. <laughs> yeah, Look, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. For me also, it is nice. I mean, it is also nice when people ask. And uh, it's like I said from the beginning, it's very difficult to, in which way you do it, you know. And maybe certain things don't make uh, sense right now. But with, let's say, added information that's going around and how mm -hmm. we make it ourselves, all these parts that maybe are like not having sense straight away in the beginning they will have sense later on when you hear more stories because then yeah. you become reminded also mm -hmm. that is the story it's like the story is the story it was a a 20 year story and uh, i have been sitting myself uh, because uh yeah i listened to your until he died so I listened 27 years, all his stories, because story after story after story, until six months before he died, he told me that actually he has nothing to say anymore. He feels he has been saying what he had to say. So I said, well, I think it's quite enough also, you know. <laughs> My God, you know, by that time your head is like, uh, you know, it's like this, uh, stretched in all directions. You know? so, yeah, I can't uh, even imagine sitting like, for so long yeah but we i can't out, imagine i found out already that after listening like uh, let me see we start in the winter of 84 within two years i could make like a main line of the story which is something that everybody else uh, has been following also like jim did it like kevin did it like Stuart did it like so many of our friends they make a little bit in order to make like an historical line to create like an historical overview, which mm -hmm. of course in this Bok family, uh, they could talk to us forever, but they have been compressing the history into a mythological concept where you don't have to talk about individual persons, but about, uh, yeah, instead of talking about all shoemakers that lived on the planet, uh, you create one sh a mythological figure called shoemaker, yeah, which is yeah. like Wijnemurden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Wijnemurden is every 12th son whose 12th son becomes 27 years old. So every of these Uko come in that position. 
how you create the mythological concept of Uko. And you know, it's an eternal concept. Like, it's a job, like Shubai. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's the same with the swan. Yeah, there's uh, millions of swans have been in the history of the human being. Yeah, but it was only one woman who in every generation played that role. So she become the mythological character. Yeah. And usually they are then represented by one animal. So if you know about which animal is allocated to the character, then everywhere you are coming across images with this animal. Ah, you know, uh, it's about swan or it's about... Mm. Or, the, what, yeah. the swan, the white swan is also connected with the Cygnus star yes. constellation. Correct. And this is the most, he most healthy... And most beauty. Uh, hell is the North Pole before ice time, and hell T is the T coming from hell. Oh, T, is east, T, oh. T is east Tour, and Tour comes from Tours Hammer, and the Tours Hammer is the symbol for the man and the woman. That's, I listened to you yesterday, and I find there's something not clear. <laughs> Because you talk about small tour and big tour and but tour <laughs> clee tour. Clee tour. Clee tour. Clee is this is clee. Clee eyes when yeah. you do like this when you have been bitten by one mosquito or something is itching. <laughs> itching. <laughs> yeah. So it's itching. A so, little yeah. bump. So clee tour. <laughs> tour is the tour is the symbol of the family of Uden with uh -huh. Bok in the middle. This is according to what the Archbishop of Finland has been saying when we asked him that, when they asked him that what is the meaning of the Tushammer. It's the symbol for the family of Uden with Bok in the middle. Hmm. I think that sounds quite heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a great mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> so the tours, huh? so the tours hammer is basically representing the two different sexes on the planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's with careful, with their friends. So and and that of course comes from the Viking system. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's a little bit like uh, oh. for us, U, for us the Y is the U. We call it U. U for Ugdrasil. And in English, it's Y. <laughs> when, when, when you know that Ugdrasil meaning is the world tree, mm. the tree of all living thing, uh, and it's the basic female uh, base to the existence of everything in the universe. Oh. Yeah, so that's Ugdrasil, the world tree which is, uh, it is for the Pirouette family, but it is very strongly uh, the female side of it, because the female is, through the input of the masculine, the female is realizing. Yeah? Oh, wow. That's a, yeah In the that's creating a of all the different forms, life forms that exist within the universe. So the Yggdrasil is... Uh, yeah, the Yggdrasil is personally very, it's very personal to the lady, let's mm. say like that. We are and the uh, fruits of the tree. Yes, we are more oak, and they are more ash. Okay. Mm. They, they draw. In, in the tree. Yeah. In yeah, we draw. are dry hunt, and they are Yggdrasil. Yeah, it's so, that is uh, difficult. Uh, yeah. We have to explain later on because otherwise, okay. too much. <laughs> yes. All right, guys, it's so. uh, sticks and circles again. <laughs> yeah, yes. maybe that'll be the name <laughs> of this episode. <laughs> yeah, sticks and circles. <laughs> hey, what I want to ask you, uh, I hear that you want to do another program. You want to do next next program with uh, with Ananto or with Appy or what was Uppie. your idea? Appy, Appy. Ah, okay, nice. Yeah, that'd be um, great. My so we're gonna ask him about his uh, book. Uh, yeah, you, are, For the you listeners. ask him. He has a uh, good knowledge of, uh, <clears throat> of right Box Saga. He get mostly from uh, Kevin and from me, and he is living twenty five kilometer away from me. So we are in regular communication. And uh, but he he has maybe not the detail, but he has a good overview, and that yeah. makes him very easy, more easy to talk with than with some nutcake like <laughs> me who is full of de detail. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's yeah. awesome, man. We want you yeah, on the but... side all the time. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, but, uh, I hope to have long life and I can tell many stories. So yeah. let's see, you know. Yeah, that would be so, nice. Sounds good, Michel. It's very Thanks. good. Bo- yeah, Michelle, boxing day, so uh, Boxing day, I go in pension, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> so, not okay. really. Oh. But... All right, everybody. Are you joking? <laughs> uh? Joking. <laughs> we don't know if you're joking or not anymore. <laughs> no, no, I, no, no, no. I, I have the age that they say that you should stop to work. The only problem is that I am not member of any pension fund. I am only mm-hmm. member of the Dutch community, and as a Dutch community member, uh, when you reach a certain age, or where you actually or bureaucrat people are already 10 years in pension by that time but anyway normal people like me they have to work till 66 and four months or something and i reached that on boxing day so i get a little support uh, from the government uh, which is like everybody get that when you are reached that age before it was 65 but of course during my life it becomes (laughs) higher and higher yeah you know because (laughs) The treasury is empty, you know. So. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. But doesn't matter. So that's quite nice. So basically, I don't have any more to work like a dog uh, all the time in order to keep the bills going. Because maybe I can, I could do a little bit less and it gives me also space to... to the sing more, more box. Yeah, sing box saga. You know? Yeah, boxing day. It's Correct. symbolic all that you <laughs> yeah, are going to retire. You know? the, the bills make fantastic? box ill. No, yeah. he's gonna sit, sing uh, the box stories for us. Yeah, yeah, boxing no problem. Day. Boxing Absolutely. day, yeah, <laughs> fantastic. All right, with all, all right. these people from box. Yeah. yeah. All wow. right, everybody. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much, yeah. to Michelle, for joining us. Yeah, Michelle thank you. Yake. Anytime, and... guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so guys, much. too. Been an honor yeah. talking to you. Absolutely, great, yeah. great honor. I'm also happy to have been meeting you here today and it has been a pleasure to talk a little bit here and uh, I hope that we, uh, with continuing stories, we can yes. make more sense out of it, you know, we yeah. start to take it a little bit more serious also, certain aspects. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, of course. And, and yeah. come up with your questions because it is also nice to answer questions mm. and then you can anyway, a question can be this big and you can get an answer like this or like this, or like this, or like this, or, you know, it can go very wide. And hmm. uh, the question then gives the inspiration to say, okay, we go in that subject today. Hmm. And it yeah. might have in the beginning nothing to do with your question, but <laughs> yeah. it, it will lead to it. Uh, maybe It'll take after, us where we need to be. You we know, need like three questions and we're good. Oh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's enough. Two I think hours. We only asked maybe five in this whole conversation. No so. problem. <laughs> no. I problem. know. I know that Don and Andy probably have tons of questions. So. Oh. Oh. Because I, I have, have already more. asked like the millions of questions. It's been <laughs> a privilege of uh, knowing Jim, and uh, he like passed me over to Michelle. So. Yeah. <laughs> It's like I, I ask you, Yake, all the time, like, what does this mean? What does this yeah. mean? And you're like, maybe, maybe one day I'll tell you. But not right now. I'm oh my like, god, I don't come like on. the typing. I'm fucking terrible at I, this typing. So, <laughs> some things are also difficult to answer just yeah. like yeah. that. Because yeah. It's really not easy. And you must have a bit of a background in order also to not sit there and go away and think that uh, what yeah. this guy tell me now you know andy <laughs> andy on, asked me a question mind. yesterday he sent me a text and asked me one question and i said dude call me yeah <laughs> and exactly. we ended up talking it's, for three it's, hours because of one question that <laughs> that's how it goes yeah. yeah i think it was the nephilim thing <laughs> yeah it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right guys man. well all right uh, again guys. thanks to michelle for sure. joining us uh, Yake, Dan, uh, we got Rising from the Ashes podcast and the Deep Share yep. podcast. You can find uh, this episode and the future episodes on those mm-hmm. feeds as well as Roots of Creation's own RSS feed and YouTube page. Dan, yes. yeah. And also Roots of Creation is on Google Podcasts. It's on Podcast Attic and it's on Spotify right yeah, now. This, confirmed. Uh, we will try to get it confirmed on more platforms also. But right now, those three 
are up so you can find it there and uh, we, we will continue to add more. And again, if I'm assuming by this, by the airing of this episode, we'll be on YouTube regularly, just the same release time and day as the podcast. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, this podcast is called Root of Creation. Roots so. of Creation. <laughs> yes. And this has been beautiful. And uh, everybody, yeah, have a good time. <laughs> Take it That's all in. Good, uh... and see us next time. Yes. All right, guys. <laughs>